Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Everybody is awake except for Papa. We woke up late today. So pardon us for being late on this broadcast. Oh yeah, Eva. Good morning. Anyway, today's Friday. Already Friday. And we're going to have a very busy weekend. A weekend of... Uh, of partying concerts Sunday we're gonna have a concert and what else tomorrow we got two parties to go to okay so we got to make the most of today to be able to uh, have fun over the weekend okay so let me see today is Friday and therefore we're gonna meditate on the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary Okay, and we are we are already at the end, right? We are on the fifth mystery, the fifth mystery of the rosary, the sorrowful mysteries. Fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion and death of our Lord. The crucifixion and death of our Lord. Okay, so let us imagine what happened there. Let's imagine what happened there, and let's see what resolutions we can draw from this, and what what we can understand from the crucifixion. So our Lord arrives at Calvary, the Mount of Skulls, the place where they crucify criminals. Our Lord is now going to meet his ultimate fate, which is to be crucified on the cross. And there they fasten him on that cross with three nails, one on each hand and one that joined his feet. Do you imagine how painful that could be? Yeah, it's hard to imagine, right? That's right, it's hard to imagine. But just imagine how, I mean, I, I, I have had the experience of getting pierced <laughs> with nails on my feet at least twice when I was a kid, and it wasn't fun. Now what more, what more our Lord being fastened by these nails and hanging with the weight of his body on that cross? It must have been really really excruciating painful painful slow manner of death now but then even in that situation what does our Lord do our Lord forgives his executioners he prays to God the Father asking him Father forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Right? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. There at the cross, our Lord teaches us the ultimate lesson of forgiveness. In the first place, that was his whole motivation for going the extreme, laying down his life for his friends. It was for the salvation of all souls, of all of us, of everybody, from the very first man, Adam and Eve, to the last baby who will ever be born. Everybody was saved by that salvific act of the crucifixion on the cross. And so our Lord had that kind of sentiment, that kind of thought, even to his death. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Most of the time when we sin, it is because we don't understand the, the, the gravity of our offenses. Most of the time we act impulsively. Most of the time we don't give enough thought before we do things. Most of the time we get blinded by our own passions 
by our own pride, by our own self-seeking, that we're not able to think right and therefore we sin. But that does not remove culpability, of course, from us. That does not remove responsibility from us. Because in the first place, it is our responsibility to know what we're doing. Right? God gave us the intellect and the will to know and understand what is good and bad. And therefore, if we don't use our heads <laughs> properly, then we fall into sin. Okay? But our Lord understands and He says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And that is the consolation that we can ourselves have. And that is what draws us to Jesus when we go to confession. When we can tell Him, Father, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Because maybe when I committed this sin, I wasn't really thinking. Maybe I wasn't... I was not in my right uh, disposition. Because if I had loved you more, perhaps I wouldn't have committed this sin. And that is the same thing we ask our Lord when we go to confession. Forgive me for my lapses. Forgive me for my lack of love. Forgive me for crucifying you on that cross again. Because that is what we do every time we commit sin. We pound on those nails on the hands of our Lord and on His feet. Every time we commit sin, we act like one of those Roman soldiers pounding those nails on His hands and feet. We're crucifying our Lord again, 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 every time we commit sin. And that should be enough motive for us to be sorry. That should really be enough motive for us to ask pardon. And real pardon, real sincere contrition when we go to confession. Just picture our Lord hanging on that cross. Just imagine Jesus hanging on that cross for every sin that we commit. If that doesn't move you to sorrow, if that doesn't move you to ask for pardon, I don't know what will. So let's think about the crucifixion in this way, that every time we pray the rosary, let's remember our own sins. And let's remember the mercy of Jesus, who went all the way to lay down his life for you, you, for us, his friends. In order that we may be saved. Okay? Now what else happened on that cross? What else happened there? You know when our Lord said. To St. John. Behold your mother. Behold your mother. Okay? Jesus gave us his own mother. At the foot of the cross. Jesus who already gave up his life who already gave up everything he owned, which is really nothing, who already surrendered everything to the Father, gives us the very last treasure that he, was, that he really uh, 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 possessed. And what was that? His own mother. His own mother. He gave us his own mother. Through St. John, we were all represented at the foot of the cross. And our Lord told St. John, Behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. Our Lady is the mother of each and every one of us. In, in a very real sense. In a very real spiritual sense. Right? Because Jesus gave her to us. And she is the source of our own consolation. She is the one who will comfort us when at times we find ourselves at the foot of the cross grieving for our own sins that crucified Jesus. Our Lady was there, firm, firm, strong, courageous, facing that crucifixion and going through that crucifixion with Jesus 
in a very strong and, and courageous way. And let us run to Our Lady. Every time we find ourselves in temptations that we could not overcome, every time we tend to give in to our own pleasures in an illicit way, every time we tend to be proud and cocky and, and all of those bad things, let us learn to run to Our Lady and ask Our Lady, Mother, Mother, help me. I don't want to crucify Jesus again. I don't want to be pounding on those nails on His hands and feet. Help me. Prevent me from doing that. Help me fight against these temptations. Help me be strong in upholding our Lord rather than condemning Him again to death. Let us remember Our Lady. Then, just before Jesus breathes his last, he says, Consumatum est. It is accomplished. All of what I have come on earth to do has now come to pass, has now been accomplished. And that is why I'm ready to go. I have given you myself. I have preached the word to you. I had revealed the Godhead to you. I had given you the church. I had constituted the church for you. Now, my work is done. Consumatum est. And as I go and resurrect later, I'll send the, another consoler, another advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will continue the work of the church all throughout the centuries. Right? So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things to think about as we meditate on this mystery. And that too, right there, is the inauguration, the formal inauguration of the church that Jesus Christ has founded. Okay? The formal inauguration of the church and all of our sacraments. All of our sacraments. When, when, that, uh, when that soldier pierced the side of Jesus and from it flowed blood and water everything that was that had to remain inside of Jesus that was that was significant in the sense that that kind of outpouring of everything else blood and water there was a sign of the sacraments it was the, the symbol of our lord inaugurating the sacraments okay? together with the inauguration formal inauguration of the church so we thank Jesus, we thank Him for this great act of mercy, this great act of compassion for all of us. But at the same time, let us remember our own responsibilities as far as our own sanctification is concerned and our own salvation is concerned. Jesus did all of this for us. He died on the cross for us. How? Are we living up to the expectations that Jesus has of us? Now let's think about these things as we meditate on the last mystery, the last sorrowful mystery of the Holy Rosary. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend ahead of you. And we'll see you again next week on this morning broadcast. Hopefully we're not late. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.